been a, kind of a frustrating run lately in terms of results, right? I mean, fighting the absolute best in the world, but not getting the results you want. What's it been like for you kind of mentally to, to get through this stretch? Um, he, things are uh, not going as planned, but when they don't go as planned, we got to make them work. So I'm here to turn the tables and and get back to to in line, you know? So um, the best thing in life is to overcome bad situations, you know? And that's what I live for. And I'm happy to be here in this situation, and I'm happy to overcome it and be a better fighter. What do you do in terms of evaluating? Like, do you think, like, what am I doing wrong mm -hmm. or what do I need to change or is it my approach? In the, like, how do you figure out what it is to fix? There is a lot of things, you know, like, of course, you evaluate what you're doing wrong, but you also try to evaluate how you're doing mentally. You try to evaluate how you do it um, uh, physically, of course. It's a, it's a, uh, three aspects, the, the mental aspect, the physical aspect, and the, and the, the fighting itself, you know. So those three things got to be in line for you to be winning fights. I've been there before. I won nine fights straight, and I plan to do the same again, you know. So you start getting everything ready and adjusted, and you've got all those things evaluated, and then your opponent changes a few weeks out, right? Yeah, but Was there any, any hesitation to say yes or frustration with that? No, to tell you the truth, uh, I was training, and then I received the message saying, hey, you're fighting this guy now, so I don't choose anything, you know. The messages said, oh, you're, the other guy got hurt, now you're fighting this guy. I said, okay. <laughs> and it doesn't change much because in these days, some of the fighters, they are very similar, you know. They all, they all know some jiu-jitsu, some wrestling, and some striking. But they are not uh, very good at anything. A couple of them are, you know. I see some of them there, the champions. You, if you see, they are specialists. So the specialists, in my opinion are the most hard to deal with. And I am a specialist, and I believe that if I can put my game uh, in the fight, I believe I am one of the best in the world in doing what I do. That's why you see so many people avoiding me doing, to do what I like to do, because I know if I can get the fight there, I am one of the best, if not the best in the world at what I do, you know? I like that you called yourself a specialist because there seemed to be this discussion that like, oh, the family's getting more well-rounded now. Yeah. You know, now they know maybe it's almost better to not be well-rounded and to remain a specialist. No, you can be well-rounded, but you cannot forget what you're good at, I think, you know. So you should know everything. It's better to know everything and don't need it than to need something and don't know how to do it, you know. So I think that's the, the thing. Last thing for me, it seems like you want to start out the nine-fight win streak uh, yeah. this weekend. What's, what's the plan for this year? I mean, do you want to fight frequently? Is it, you know... Just a couple? Like, what's the plan for you this year? The plan is to fight uh, maybe four times this year, you know. So uh, doing this one already on the beginning of the year, I asked them to be very active. So uh, maybe another one three months from now, and we go from there on. How's it going? Name it right here. Good. Uh, since you're around all the Gracies, it's kind of like a, a, a secondary nature for you to be around legends. So it's only right that you're kind of fighting on this legendary car with Fedor, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, I said this before. Uh, my family members, my uncles, they are like uh, superheroes for me when I was growing up, you know. I remember when I dressed to Halloween, I used to dress on my gi and say that I am Royce Gracie. So I have Spider-Man uh, eating next to me in the table, like uh, having Hanzo and Royce. Actually, if the real Spider-Man real was there, I know that the Hanzo will beat him up. So uh, I have the he real he heroes next to me, you know? So it's, it's amazing. I fought in cards with Fedor before, and always have been great nights for me. And I know that this night won't be different uh, fighting with this legend in the same card. And last one for me. So, you know, a lot of people listen to your advice because, you know, you're one of the best grapplers out there. So for the fighters that's up and coming and they're just trying to prioritize in one specific skill, what would be your advice for them? Of course, my advice would be to learn other skills, you know, but try not to forget what you're good at. Uh, so don't get excited learning something new and stopping to do what you already do well, you know. I think uh, this happened to me before. 
you, you knock someone out, you want to knock them out again. You know, it's much easier to knock someone out than to take them down to the ground, hold them, pass their guard, get their back, squeeze their neck, you know. So uh, just don't get excited. Keep doing your bread and butter and uh, just go look at Khabib, you know. We all know what he's going to do and he go there and does it. So I think that's the key. He knows how to box. He knows how to do other things, but he never forget his wrestling. Neiman right here. Um, so question for you about the Brazilian fight culture. Uh, lately, we've seen Brazilian fighter, fellow Brazilian fighter, uh, Glover Teixeira hang up the gloves. Uh, what can you say about the, the career of Glover and uh, the way that he made his trademark and, uh, you know, really had a great career and also himself being Brazilian. What can you say about the connection and ultimately um, if there's anything, you know, that you were able to take away from such a great high level uh, fighter and career? Yeah, man, it was an amazing fight. He showed amazing heart, you know. Um, Glover was always known in Brazil as being a very tough guy, you know. And uh, back in the day, I remember he had a lot of fights in Brazil, but he couldn't get into America because of his visa. So all the Brazilians were like, man, we got to get this guy out there. We got to get this guy out there. When he finally did, we'll see him blowing up. But I think the most beautiful part of his story, it's winning the belt at 40, 40 years old, you know, and losing fights and winning and losing and then getting there. That's what I... What I like to see the most with Glover, with Charles Oliveira, is guys that have been to the worst in the sport. They've been knocked out. People don't want to know about them anymore. And then they start winning fights again, and they win the belt. So that story of winning, losing, and winning again, for me, is the, it, it, it's great. It's pretty easy to, to be the guy that just go out there and wins all the time. You know, you, you don't have... Uh, the, the troubles in your life to overcome. You just go, like John Jones, you know? I think if you lose a couple of fights, it would be good for him. So, I'm sorry, Jones, but <laughs> I think you're going to get in line more, you know? So, uh, overcoming bad situations in life, it's the number one thing for me. Neiman, right here. I guess for you, um, you know, is it is it coming into this fight mentally? Is it just solely focused on getting a win on Saturday, or do you still get motivated by, like, title aspirations? Is that something that's still in the back of your mind? No, the title is always in the back of my mind. Of course, I want to win this fight so bad, you know. But it's not just about winning. Um, I like to win. In the, I don't want to... Like, if you guys watch my fights, you've never seen a boring fight. I never did a boring fight. So I care about this. I care about winning, but winning well, you know. So, of course, I want to win, but I want to do a statement. So, I think that's the difference in this fight. I know, obviously, you just kind of joked about John and, and needing to have a couple losses for you. I guess, what did you learn about yourself? What's the biggest takeaway that you've come out of from these experiences? Man, it's great. You learn a lot about yourself. You learn about a lot about other people, you know, the way they treat you when you're winning and the way they treat you when you lose, you know. Uh, so you get to know a lot about yourself and other people, about life. But most important, of course, is yourself. Uh, how do you feel? You know, like, man, I know I'm not a loser, you know. Like, I just lost a fight. But why people are treating me this way? People, they used to shake my hand and not shake anymore, you know. And you start seeing things and you start seeing who's real, who's not. But uh, definitely going back there after having a bad night and trying over again, it, it shows a lot of heart to do that, you know? I could stay at my house and then have a fight again and, man, hey, I won a lot of fights in the past, you know? But no, man, I'm, I know I, I, I am one of the best in the world and I can, and I can prove it and I will prove it. And I, 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 I'm so grateful to, he, to be here again, you know? What's up, Demon, over here? So we know Hoyce and Henzo are going to be in the building on Saturday night, but you told me your favorite fighter growing up was your Uncle Hickson. Will Hickson be Don't here? do this, brother. <laughs> For... Will Hickson I'm going to get beat up because of him. <laughs> also, I wanted to ask, how much of a role does visualization play in your uh, the process in your training camp pre preparing for this Saturday? Yeah, man, visualization is something really big and something that I always did, you know? 
Uh, I try to vi visualize everything, me going to the arena, uh, try to visualize uh, how it's going to be the first belt, everything. It's really important. And uh, the mental preparation for a fight, uh, maybe you guys don't know this, but in my opinion, it's the most important. You know, I think it's 80% mental and the rest is physical. So it's really important. So your last fight was a bit of a stand-up war. The one before that with Logan Storley, it was billed as the battle for ground supremacy. I think you guys spent two seconds on the ground combined. Can we expect to see you bring this fight to the mat more, maybe bring it to where you specialize? Yes, definitely. I work a lot on my wrestling for this fight. I train a lot with Benil Dariush and his coaches, Coach Marcos Molica, and a lot of good people, Jacob Harmon. Of course, my coach, uh, Master uh, Rafael Cordero, Master Hanzo Gracie. So I want to do uh, a lot of grappling on this fight. But hey, my fight with Logan was pretty fun, right? So I think you guys like it. And I care about this, like I said before. And I don't know why you guys don't talk about this fight being one of the best fights of the year in Bellator. I think you guys forgot about it, you know? Five round war. I almost knocked him out. He almost knocked me out. So. Yeah, you, but it's going to be a grappling fight. Good luck, man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Even over here, I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, have you ever sparred? Because we know that Rafael trains uh, Mike Tyson. Have yeah. you ever sparred with Mike Tyson? Oh, no. <laughs> I cannot take him down. What the hell am I going to do there? Be a punching bag? No way. I'll go there if I say I can't take him down, you know. Then we, we have a deal. But if only boxing, then there's no deal. Mike is a bad man. He doesn't know how to go easy on people. I've seen him before. There's no play uh, sparring with him. So no way. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Neiman, right, right here. Um, yeah. So, of course, we know the fight game is sort of uh, what have you done for me lately. And obviously hasn't been the best results uh, recently. But you, you have um, what appears to be a, a good mental grasp on it all. But the promotion putting you in such a prominent spot despite the, the losing streak, did that give you an extra boost of confidence coming in here? No, not, not really. Um, Bellator has been great for me, and I think I have been great for them too. I've been fighting here for almost eight years, so we have a pretty good relationship, you know, so... It's not like other promotions that people lose a couple fights and they worry about their job. Of course, I worry about my job. Of course, I'm worried that my pay is going to get lower. But uh, they've been really, really good to fighters. If you see the way the Bellator does, it's different. You know, when they get legends and older fighters, they usually put, they match them with each other, you know. They don't try to put a, a young guy to beat up a legend to make the young guy be more uh, recognizable, you know? So uh, I'm really comfortable with Bellator and I'm really comfortable with my situation. Thank you guys, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to talking to all of you.